Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. We're going to look at X-Force number 116. This is Peter Milligan and Mike Allred coming on. This is, uh, I believe, 2001, early in Joe Quesada's tenure as editor-in-chief there at Marvel. I recognize it from this trade dress. Mm. It's a very distinct period for me. But this was uh, a lot of the interesting stuff that I saw Joe Quesada doing when he took over was bringing in talent that maybe hadn't worked on Marvel or hadn't worked on a regular Marvel title and uh, really kind of shaking things up. Like you got to see some interesting creators that were maybe more indie and less house style show up. And I think um, Mike Allred is a really, really good example of that. We would have known him, you know, in the 90s, he was doing Madman, uh, which was a pretty distinct alternative superhero. Did some stuff at Vertigo to kind of show his uh, flexibility and I guess ability to work within that editorial system. And, uh, Hadn't done too much at Marvel. I think he did a Spider-Man annual, which we looked at in a previous video. But it felt like this was a different approach to comics at Marvel when Mike Allred shows up. Yeah, in a big in a big way. Uh, and and it was it was a big deal with uh, Allred doing like like main, mainstream books really. This is what he was doing the year before, self-publishing his own superhero team. You can see Madman there on the cover, and I love the Atomics partially because it was printed the first four issues on actual real newsprint yeah um that color lends well to but once uh, again think about x-force and then look at this is uh the guy who's going to take over x-force that's a really that's a big change it is yeah yeah because he has such a classic approach you know and x-force is like you know generation x 1990s comics with all of the bluster of you know, the the sort of edge lord shit that kids were into at that time. But listen, it's not the nineties anymore. Right. And uh visually, like it's about as far removed as you can get from that heavy cross hatching you know, gritty style. Um one thing that when I looked this up they made a big production about is no comics code. This issue was did not get the comics code approval and rather than make any changes, they decided to run it as is, uh without, you know, trying to Whatever it was worth in 2001 at that point. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like it was a paper tiger at that point. It was just like one other kind of s s selling mechanism. Pete Milligan was doing uh, Vertigo stuff, would have been doing Batman comics and things like this, man. We, you know, one of the, the, the sort of British invasion dudes from 2000 AD who came over, you know, in the second wave, third wave of, of all of that. Uh, so adding a little spice to... Uh, to this kind of series. And by the way, like this is early enough in, in 2000 that uh, the proven formula that has existed for the past 20 years really wasn't fully established then. And what I'm talking about is a couple of creators meet professionally, doing a cup of coffee, a Marvel, DC, whatever. And then you just do your thing over at Image and have your own your own series and prosper that way because you bring a small percentage of your Batman audience or a small percentage of your brother power, the geek audience or whatever the fuck, uh, you know, uh, Mike Allred would have, would have got from his Marvel DC stuff. Uh, I say all that because if it was a different point in time, if it was modern day, you just make this comic yourself and call it something else because it's completely divorced. I mean, they invented a whole new thing and you know, probably a good thing that it didn't really catch on because then there would be underoos with gloop or whatever the fuck. <laughs> and then Mike Allred and Pete Milligan w wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, benefit from that in any major way. This is our leader character and his power is some sort of vomit. And he wears this mask that reminds me of like Cyclops with his uh, red eyes, you know, to protect that power or something. But he's sitting here like after apparently hooking up with these girls and watching footage of their last mission. And you can see the effects of his um, super powered vomit on uh, on the soldiers that he's fighting. This is a really bizarre dupe is the uh, is your uh, underoos character. But he apparently records this stuff so that then you can uh, sit around and watch it. It's such a strange take on X-Force because, like, I reread this and my thought was, this is exactly the description of Youngblood. I, it's like, um, you know, government-sponsored kind of superheroes and celebrity. Yes. You know, they're all in this celebrity position. And if you think of, like, how Youngblood was sold to us and described in interviews, this team fits that. Issue one, Chapel, man. He wakes up with the lady, like, yo go catch a cab. I got a, I got business. And these chicks right here, they're like, we got to be on the runway in the morning. I thought that was a real smart piece of dialogue because it's like establishing this dude. Not only does he get a couple of chicks, man, 
but he's like rocking super supermodel ladies. <laughs> It's so funny, too. Like, they're talking about he's not studying the tactics. This is how he gets off. Is exactly, watching. <laughs> yeah. He gets boners and, and gets ready to, to, to fuck by watching uh, Mass Destruction. And I, All Red pulls this off. Almost anybody else, I would uh, be disappointed. But the placidity of this splash page, the perfect uh, vertical, that's anti-Marvel. You know that's 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 anti house style and everything, but it's 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 all red language, you know. So so it's cool. All red's such a weird artist to me because in my mind he was two color madman from Tundra. You know the stuff that I got early, and by the time you get to this point, it's like he's kind of a perfect superhero cartoonist. You know, like I mean he's done so many since then, so many Marvel books, and it's a the style just seems like perfectly suited to superheroes. But at the time, like. You know, we're still coming off the shadow of, of the Jim Lees and Rob Liefelds. It was weird to see this, but he, he, he had, looks great now. He had a lot of respect from co- creators. Like, when he put together the, those Madman cards, mm-hmm. Frazetta's doing a card, Kevin Nolan's doing a card, Frank Miller's doing He gets to be a part of Legend. Uh, heck of a figure artist. Slangs a brush like no other, man, with that really bold... Yeah line but then he'll hit some some thin inner lines and stuff uh you never see the character any character in like a straight pose or like everybody's twisted and moving in very natural ways um he's he's got a lot of tools uh at his disposal that i think easily get dismissed because of the cleanliness of it but he draws like no other He's a good figure artist, which, of course, you need for superheroes. Some of these elements remind me almost of Charles Burns. And, yeah. you know, one of his secret tools that isn't a secret is Laura Allred, who is yeah. coloring this issue. So, you know, you've really got the team together. And I think working closely with a colorist like that for decades, it helps. You yeah. know, you're able to kind of anticipate. You know, it's Lynn Varley and Frank Miller. Like, you're able to anticipate how much do I need to give you in the line art? What am I going to get back in the colors? And it really is strong as a result. If you love comics and want to support Cartoonist Kayfabe, buy our books. Red Room, the anti-social network, collects Ed's first four issues of the modern outlaw comic Red Room, Murder on the Dark Web, for fun and profit. This is available now wherever books are sold, including your local comic book shop. You can request it if it's not already on their shelf. Four great issues of comics and art and a lot of great back matter, including this first written draft of Red Room. Some notes from Ed on the making of this book. Starting in March, trigger warnings. The second season of Red Room will begin, and this is the cover to look for whenever you go to your local comic shop in March looking for Red Room. If you haven't already had that added to your subscription box, look for this cover on the shelves March 9th. These are the variants that are available for Red Room. A second variant here by Ed Piscor. Peach Momoko, The Cottage Industry. And my homage to Robert Crumb's Zap Comics. These will all be available at your better comic book shops starting in March. And if you can't wait until March, you can join Ed on Patreon to read Red Room Comics ahead of time. Dropping every Tuesday, three bucks gets you the archive there. And that link is in the link tree below this video. My next comics project, Hulk Grand Design Monster, will be hitting comic shops in March. This is what I did for lockdown, Ed. I yes, locked sir. myself in a room for a year I, with 500 issues of The Incredible Hulk, and I distilled the Hulk's story, the first 40 years of the Hulk, into two standalone issues, Hulk Grand Design Monster, Hulk Grand Design Madness. These will be coming out in March and April 2022. Tell your local comic shops you want a copy to pre-order a copy for you to put it in your pool box. And uh, issue number one, Monster, has some great variants, including this gem from Ed. Peach Momoko doing her take on She-Hulk and Marcos Martin with the classic Hulk transformation from meek Bruce Banner into the Incredible Hulk there. These are not retailer incentives, which means if you like one of these covers better than my cover, tell your local comic shop that you want it and they can pull that for you at no extra price, but you got to let them know ahead of time. So let those comic shop knows what you want for Hulk Grand Design right now. And now back to our regular scheduled program. This character is Coach. 
and he's kind of the leader of these guys. And what you see here is like a press conference to introduce a new member of the team. And, and I mean, there's parody here because it's a crusty old dude who's the leader. Uh, you know, it's Cable, except I think he's missing an arm instead of having a, cy- a cybernetic right. arm. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, and also, Coach, you, I mean, you got to think about Cheers a little bit. Yeah, it's... <sighs> It's, it's, it's an interesting comic. This is Axel Alonso, too, as your editor, who I guess they probably worked together at Vertigo. Axel would come from Vertigo. Yeah. So I'm guessing that maybe that's how, probably definitely Peter Milligan and maybe Axel, uh, Mike Allred as well. Got to look at my credits for that uh, Brother Power of the Geek one shot. <laughs> I think it was just called The Geek. Yeah. And, of course, things were going wrong at your, uh, at your press conference. And, of course, the vomit guy's name is Axel. Yeah. Is that a mistake? Is that a coincidence? can't be a coincidence right zeitgeist is one of the names of the characters like you can kind of see as as you say it there's parody and satire going on here uh the always the well-positioned person (laughs) cropping out anything that uh we shouldn't be seeing there some of my favorite stuff and i employ this to to uh, you know whatever effect uh is zoom out mid shot polka dot eyes yeah and then you zoom in and then you got the proper eyes like i i love that in comics I see a lot of like professional um, sports kind of handling with some of these scenes, like some of the uh, press conference kind of stuff and some of the character personalities. But it, it totally, it, you know, X Force Cafe. This is young blood. Yeah, right? and I, I think that's so like Rob Liefeld, man. <laughs> the fun part that comes with this comic is, of course, the longtime readers of X Force. There's not a <laughs> remaining member from the previous issue. You know, there's no Cannonball, no no Cable, Domino, Boom Boom. How does this work? Like uh, last month, they tie up something with uh, Adam Polina or something, and then it just jumps into this. I don't know that they tie anything up. It's interesting because we're going to see letters uh, show up in the next issue about this. Like they, you know, they sent this out to people. I think via the internet to get early responses. Um, but I think it was like a stunt, you know, very intentionally put out there. Like they were just going to switch the status quo on this book. And I don't know that X-Force was doing much in issue 115 at that point. You know, it's who knows, maybe it was on the chopping block to be canceled because it does seem like a pretty radical reinvention. Uh, you know, why not do a new book or whatever? People love number one. So why are you choosing to do this in a 116 issue? It got a lot of push. Yes. Uh, in the comic shops and stuff, there were, there were posters and, and things. And you can see a much greater emphasis on character yes. than, than what, uh, at least the X-Forces I remember. And I wasn't reading it up to this point, but I, only, I mean, the previous issues, you, you weren't having this kind of character interaction. I only have 75 issues. <laughs> you ever see a couple of the characters out on a nice dinner? Two pages <laughs> of a dinner? So. It's out of Fabian's wheelhouse. This is funny shit. Yeah. Because it's like you got a mishmash, man. You got you got your uh, some dudes from Backstreet Boys, but like that's Justin Timberlake, and uh, this one I forget what they call him, but that's totally Joey Fatone. And the funny thing about Joey Fatone from NSYNC is that his last name is spelled F A T O N E, and he is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't feel lost on Milligan and company, right? <laughs> right. Um, this is fun, though, because, also, one, they talk about, you know, this is a manufactured boy band. That's essentially what X-Force is in this new iteration. Right. You know, it's this manufactured superhero team, and then as they line up to start this fight, it says, uh, you know, like, he's excited because, like, these are these are the kind of bad guys we rarely get nowadays. You know, like, you get to go make some good video, <laughs> is what they're saying. This is, this is another... Uh, strength of all reds that gets dismissed or at least is not thought of that much because i don't know how well uh red rocket 7 was received it was an odd size can't do a square book everybody yeah yeah and also it wasn't magazine size it was like lp sized or something like this but his ability to, to capture uh likenesses is second to none like he's he's perfect at it like in red rocket seven i mean there's chuck berry on one page there's david bowie on the next uh elvis on the next dozens and dozens of famous rock and rollers and he can do that you know he's very good at that man so capturing these guys 
that, that's that's a tool that he has in his in his kit. Smart on someone's part, you know, if that's Milligan thinking like I can take advantage of that. Yeah. We say it a million times. Like if you're the writer, like figure out what that artist does well and get it on the page. This is a good page right here. This one. <laughs> all those logos. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Eros it's on there. Charlton and Avatar next to each other. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you could do an episode on that page. Oh, totally, man. First off, I had no idea Avatar was around, but I guess, yeah, 2000, that makes sense. CrossGen. Is this... CrossGen is the forgotten company, right? Totally. But, but like, I'll never forget them, because even as a little kid, I was thinking, like, all these people that are allowing themselves to be uprooted and moved to Florida, what are you thinking? It's not going to last, and now you're, you're away from your home base... Uh, living under Little Lord Fauntleroy who's telling you what to do. Like, as a little kid, I knew that this was doomed. You know what, though? I swear those guys, when they came back, were all good. You know, like, being in that room next to your peers, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of Joe Kubert school, right? Like, being surrounded by other dudes that are all trying to make the same thing. Like, I'm, we want to make good comics. I mean, I give mad props to Steve McNiven, who 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 came up in this system, wasn't, like, uprooted from... Uh, you know, an established lifestyle was a kid came down there and then became a bad motherfucker. Is this Rick Veach? I don't. I don't know. No. I'm not sure what that is. I don't think that's King Hell. No. But it is some fun stuff in there. Classics Illustrated, Warp Graphics, Viz. That's that's a fun page. Much better than uh, Super Early Brandon Graham and Radio Comics. <laughs> we digress. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. So they're heading off to do their battle here in. Uh, I guess that's New York City. Is, is Sonic TV, you know, obviously an MTV kind of reference there. And uh, rescue your boys are us and fight the bad guys. Really inventive visuals for some of these things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and Laura Allred doing some stuff. Like we saw it on the previous page. We're, we're seeing it here where she's doing some things with the color that is not really indicated in line. Maybe there were some color hold things. Maybe uh, Al Red drew a couple of shapes on a piece of tracing paper or something to, to scan in for her to have as a guideline. Who knows? But that is the benefit of, you know, living in the same house as your colorist. Yeah, for sure. They throw the, just the peanuts they throw at us. I feel like that's a really intentional use of language. You know, getting peanuts in there is then we're getting into the monologue of his mutant history. You know, this is one of those, it just doesn't feel like stuff's accidental. Yeah, you know what I do think is accidental is uh, that this is on a right-facing page because of uh, ad placements and stuff like that. That would have been way more effective on a page turn. Yeah, it could be. Look at using dropping a photo in on a, on a billboard in the background. In fact, that that whole thing looks like a photo background. Yeah, you know, like the building itself and stuff. Pretty strange. A little Kirby collide. Reminds element. me a lot of uh, the Matrix scene. You know, with the helicopter leveled up at the building. Mm. Oh yeah, right. About right. to unload and. One thing going through this, I kept wondering is like, what doesn't get the comics code? You know, I mean, Punisher gets comics code yeah, I know, approval. Yeah, yeah, so like, what are we doing here that's sort of crossing the line? And there's some violence, but it's not outrageous. Like the fingers being blown off as the uh, as the guns unloading. Is our guy dead? Oh yeah, most of the team dies in this issue. <laughs> and and doesn't come. So it's like all new people in the next issue. It's not all new. You know, a couple of them did survive. But that's the two that survived. I guess Dupe survived. But, you know, th those are your survivors. Darwin Cook would do a couple of fill-in issues on this run as well. I was pretty much checked out, man, of, of mainstream, you know, Marvel DC comics around this time. Me too. You know, it was all red is what got me, um, got my attention on it. Because it was, like, just unlikely. Yeah. You know, that he's going to take over an X book. It, it, was, it was sort of out there. But, uh, you know, you see Alonzo really kind of... Um, I guess a, a close associate with Quesada as Quesada starts to do his editor in chief run and, and, you know, try to bring in a different tone to these comics. So that's what you see there. And I did pull a couple of these other issues just because this is the waning days of your letters columns. And they are so smart with the way these letter columns run because I remembered this as one of those letter columns where it's like, we hate it. How dare you do this? And half the letters are like that. And the other half love it. Uh, that runs for a while. I don't know how long the whole run is, but this is one of the first omnibuses I remember uh, because it collected like the X-Force and X-Statics into, you know, a book this thick. Yes. But it was really awesome to have it, um, you know, because clearly it's one run. Yes. And uh, like I said, I believe that they are relaunching this. I don't know that it's called X-Statics, but 
uh, it leaves an impression because this is a 20 plus year old book now and uh, apparently there's still some memory of it enough to to relaunch it I'll, I'll, I'll say this man I I, I never read uh, 116 before putting this video together I enjoyed it a lot and I will be reading subsequent issues mm -hmm. just to see uh, what, what the what the guys are doing. I'm always hot and cold on Peter Milligan. Uh, there are times where, where where he's in his groove, and there are times where I'm just not feeling it. Uh, but he seems inspired uh, for this. I do think that there was some some you know wink wink nod nod stuff happening at the little writers retreats or whatever ha is happening in the back offices that allows him to feel that creative uh, juice. To kind of do his thing, man. When you get to start off with whole cloth, it's a very uh, special predicament you're in because it's only when you start making decisions do things start to get narrowed down to being what it is. So you're you you begin with ultimate possibility, and for a certain type of creator, that's very fun. That's very exciting, you know, and it does seem like they're putting their best foot forward here. Uh, I'm going to be reading subsequent issues. It's a cool story for an issue one, too, in that they introduce all these characters and then they kill most of them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a surprise, you know, that's probably Absolutely. not what you expected whenever you crack open page one and see some new characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, uh, you know, the psycho, you know, you yes. show this guy very prominently and then let's off him. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's so, why I literally asked you, like, so what, they just stitch him up the, in the next issue? Yeah, you can see it's a lot of different characters, uh, just just a couple few issues later. It's a good move, you know? It, it keeps, it's unorthodox pugilism, man. Keep, it keeps you, keeps you wondering. Uh, when you introduce these fresh, fresh characters, uh, anybody can get got. I like the trade dress, too. Yeah, you little know, it's, corner it's an box up, piece. Update of that corner box and looks really good if you're just seeing like the top your top quarter as Eric Larson always points out. Got to make that part work, and I think that's a pretty good uh, a pretty good look for it. And good looks to uh, Laura Allred in an era where the abuse of color filters and blurs and sheens and shines and highlights were the rage. You put this comic uh, on the racks with kind of like cell shaded color scheme stands out man it's so strange to think like somebody walked in to marvel and said look this is the guy we're gonna put this dude on x-force what do you think boss love it <laughs> that's a visionary thing that's what i want out of editors though just totally. like like find new ways to to make this book exciting and i think they did it made a lot of noise at the time so it's kind of cool to go through it maybe we'll read some more and uh and dig into it uh some some future issues or go back and check out atomics and some of all reds uh, earlier stuff but Man, he's had a long run at Marvel, and it kind of begins here. Doubt we'll see very much of that kind of uh, energy in the editorship at this point, because those motherfuckers trying to hold on to their health insurance for dear life, man, in this in these waning years of yeah. Marvel DC Comics before they start to get published by Comics Abrams and IDW and places like that, man. Yeah, it was a different era. Good to go? Indeed. All right, man. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What is out there, Jimmy? Hulk Grand Design Monster. It'll be out in comic book shops in March. Pre order that stuff now. Tell your local comic shop that you want Hulk Grand Design Monster and uh, pick the cover that you prefer. Some really nice options there. You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see some of the Hulk Grand Design original art and some of the process behind how I put that book together. Red Room, the anti-social network, is the trade paperback in stores today that collects the 2021 season of Red Room Comics. Uh, get it while it's hot. That thing is going quick. Uh, but you can also pre-order and subscribe at your local comic shop to the next round of Red Room Comics called Trigger Warnings. Issue 1 is coming out March 9th. Uh, you're going to be coming out on a monthly basis. Every issue completely uh, one and done. A full meal for each issue that comes out. And uh, you could read those comics ahead of time on my Patreon right now. 200, 200 plus pages of comics material for $3 with new strips coming out every Tuesday. You could get to the links for all of our stuff, our comics and our Patreons, at our link trees. In the, the description below this video, what else do we have out there, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Grab it a t-shirt, grab it a sh Grabbing a sweater, grabbing a hat is a great way to help uh, support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel to keep things rocking on that daily basis. Uh, well, uh, give them some marching orders, Jimmy. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics.